basically what we have to do today hinges on having value down first, right? So you're not gonna do, you're not gonna try to put a leaf, a set of leaves down first and then put the value on top. That's really inefficient. So you put the value down of the overall tree and then you, uh, then you put your marks in and erase back in or whatever. Uh, depending on the tree. So you kind of have to figure out for each type of tree and each specific tree that you're drawing or bush or whatever, shrubbery if you prefer. Do you have support on oh, okay. Thank you. That happens. Um, you have to figure out like the particular tree's like motion. So you think the tree, generally speaking, trees grow up. Sometimes they grow off a little to the side. They expand outwards. They fall down, gravity affects them. You know, if it's a certain time of day, sometimes the leaves will go up towards the sun, or if it's rainy, they'll hang down. So you have a bunch of different situations that you might encounter. Once the, once the trees die, then that's another uh, situation because you have more branches, less leaves, right? So if you look at the, the pine tree way over there, right? on the right, it's just kind of sticking up by itself. Uh, we talked about this briefly yesterday, that you have the branch coming out, and the branch literally just supports those leaves, and the marks can go every, every direction, right? And so you work with like little clusters. And you'll see that certain areas have to go pretty dark for them to be usable. So you may have to begin darkening some of these. So in the far distance, you can get away with uh, without much detail. Why would it have to be darker to be usable? Because look at how dark it is, right? Oh, okay. It's just, if you squint at it against the sky, like the sky is gonna have like a little bit of gray tone to it because the sky is still darker than this like than this pathway in front of us. So you have to go go pretty dark to, to get that sort of to capture that a little bit. And then you see up on the top part of that tree that uh, there are sections of dark that go through it. And then there are sections that are a little bit lighter. So you can take the kneaded rubber and sort of shape it into like a point, and then um, then pick up little sections of light where you want there to be light. And if you really want to get into the detail of the of trees like this, you can you know you can start to really give them um, a contour. But the way that you do a contour on on a tree like this isn't by um, I'll show you what not to do, if you, can't, if you can see this. You don't go around the contour outlining it. So you do not? Right. You can choose to do that, but that immediately looks more cartoony and less naturalistic, right? So if you have the edge of a tree, right, let's say you have a flat tree, you work that edge by going counter to that line, right? You'll cross the line 90 degrees, whatever angle that you see. And that's, and that's how you can build up uh, the appearance of a contour while maintaining uh, the naturalism of, the, trunk or of the tree. Any... Right up here, I'm working on the very top no, of that. But... Oh, this? That was just an example of how to treat the edge, right? So the edge is going to be more complicated, it's going to go around like that, but you want to work around the edge by making your marks go against that line. You know, because in reality that line doesn't exist. Does that make sense? So you see that little section of the tree is getting really pretty developed. Right. Yeah, and it doesn't take that long. It makes it look Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and 
the thing is, most people know about contour because that's kind of what everybody comes in with. Um, so you can choose to use that where you need it, right? Like on the dead on the dead branch that's going to go right here. You know, you might need some contour to make that one happen, right? So for that one, you actually would just have a line. Probably, yeah. There's not really much way to do it. You just want to make sure that it's complicated enough that it that it's uh, accurate to what's there. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. And then you notice where this tree goes down and, and, and goes behind that smaller tree, right? You'll see that you can still see bits of it. So what you can do is bring the tree down in a continuous line to a point where you can't see it anymore because it's too dark. And you can go ahead and put in the, the shadow of that tree, right? For the trunk, did you make it go lighter as you went down, or...? Not really, it's just looking know. lighter because this is this is lighter than this, like the surrounding area. That's a little perceptual trick that people, a lot of people make use of. So this little section right here is going to be really, really dark. So it's going to take some layering to get to that. But then you'll notice that the um, tree in front of it's a little lighter. So you're going to have to go through um, where you see that light and kind of start to kill the... Go right over the, the tree. Then when you come... Like yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then you can come back and work on that tree that's in front. You know, find its its edge and its contours. So you're saying that dark section's the room? Is that what you're saying? This no, this is just the shadow of this of this tree oh. right here. Or it will be. See how it gets really dark where that sign is? I'm gonna eliminate that sign. Okay, I got Just it. because I don't feel like it needs to be there. So you get like hints of this tree, so you can continue just to knock it down, right? So because I drew the whole the tree down through that, like you're still gonna perceive it. It's still gonna kind of like more or less be there but you get now you get control of what goes in front of it and how the and how that appears and you can start to use some line um, if you want to define certain areas because what we want to build up to in this situation is the fact that you can see very distinct like cut out layers of trees going back in space like, so you have, right, we have this line that just goes right along the edge of the field. So, um, the other situation, so you kind of have a hard silhouette here. And here you have, like, the beginning of this overlap, right? So, the other situation you're going to encounter in this, in this sort of thing is how to deal with this edge right here, right? Where you go from that to the kind of ground plane and you'll notice here on the ground plane that there are these long horizontal bands from the, the grass mowing pattern and so you can start to uh, incorporate those in and the trick is uh, for this edge right here um, it, it appears to be really harsh right and very dark and high contrast but you kind of want to leave it soft you're not going to same thing as you did here, you're not going to work the edge like this. Going parallel to it, you're going to go at an, at an angle to that edge. Even though at the end it'll appear to be straight, you're going to work uh, against 
the direction of that line. So that gives you, because that gives you control over how sharp or how soft it is. At the very end of the drawing, you can come back and you can sharpen up the edge if you need it. In spots. Most likely you're gonna be happy with how it looks by working, um, working counter to it. <laughs> and, you know, so when you look here, you know that there's, that this mass right here is gonna kind of overlap what's behind it. And so you look at the edge and you're like, well, some of the stuff on the edges is, is kind of darker, right? So I know that right here, the trees in the background are going to be a little bit darker than the, than the trees in the foreground. But not everywhere. Here it switches and the foreground trees are a little darker. And these are a little lighter. But we want that edge to get perceived properly so we can kind of make that meet. And you can come in with your hard eraser or the soft one, and you can start knocking out little textures. And you can take a knife and sharpen your eraser so that you get like a, you know, a fine edge like that. I like doing that. And then eventually, you kind of pick a contour to stick with, and then you have another register of trees way, way in the background. And they're gonna be pretty dark. And they're gonna go up against. So basically what you're doing, um, more or less, is playing with edges, right? And how edges interact. And, um, you know, even, even expert painters you know, that are really convincing in their, in their rendering and modeling, will still have edge problems, right? And you'll see, um, I'm sure you'll encounter this soon, is you'll see places where edges are too sharp and they become perceived like the figure in the ground, like the foreground, background, reverse on that, along that edge if you isolate the edge, right? You can't tell what's in front and what's behind because the edge is too sharp. So by working against the direction of the edge, you can control that a little bit more. And so, but don't overdevelop any one particular area, right? Like, because I've developed this area a good amount, I want the whole drawing to have that amount of development before I take it further and add in, you know, super mega close detail, right? 